Ooh. Kind of feel like Howard Carter when he discovered King Tut's tomb. Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I'm gonna to do something that I've been waiting months to do. I'm gonna unbox this smoker from Franklin Barbecue Pits. Now, if you don't know, Aaron Franklin, who has a very famous barbecue restaurant, is now making smokers. They're made in Austin, Texas, and mine says number 132. So I think that means there are only 131 other smokers like this out there right now. And uh, I'm really excited to try it out and hopefully give you guys some information and help you make the decision as to whether or not you wanna spend your hard-earned money on one of these pits. Now to unbox this thing, you need two things. First, the uncrating instructions and a cordless drill. Each one of these panels is labeled with a number that tells you the order in which you should take them off. So you can read the instructions, and these are actually pretty good. If you've ever tried to put anything together from a place like Ikea, you know that they have a bunch of pictures that can sometimes be confusing. These are really good, really straightforward, so I like that. Panel number one, and the first one that I'm gonna take off is located on the top, so after I pop that off, we're gonna get our first look at the Franklin Barbecue Pit, and I am pumped. Now the time has come. Ooh, this is awesome. It smells kind of like a wood shop too, which is nice. But let's see what we got. All right, this looks maybe a shade smaller than I had in my head. And wow, somebody's a good welder. I'm impressed. As a bad welder, I know enough about welding to know when somebody's pretty decent. Well done, he's good. The last side to go down has now turned into a handy dandy ramp to get this thing off of here. But first, I have to take these blocks that are blocking the wheels from rolling right now. I have to take those off, and then I gotta cut these guys. Now these two screws that were started right here, I drove in because I want this ramp to be connected to the base so that when we try to pull this thing off, it doesn't push this off and the whole thing falls. So, that's a great idea, and I appreciate that they took the time to think through how people are gonna unbox this thing. All right, let's see what's inside. I'm guessing there should be a stack, a water pan, a thermometer, and a few other things. Let's see what it is. One thirty-two. That's it. So this is what we've got. Got a handle for the firebox door. I've got a thermometer, also says 132. Everything is numbered. Okay, then I have a wrench right here to put the stack on and a grease bucket, a little water pan here, and finally, operation and maintenance owner's manual. Looks very retro, like something they would give you in the 1960s when you bought something. I like that, but I'm really excited to check this out. Hey, it's signed by Aaron Franklin, number 132. Nice. First thing I'm gonna do is put the stack on. So I'm gonna take these bolts out, put the stack on top, put the bolts back through, and tighten it down with this wrench that was included.
Almost done. Water pan going in. And finally, grease bucket. All right, smoker, go to your home. Ugh. Are you too good for your home? <laughs> so a couple things I noticed about this thing are number one, this door is really light. So the Brazos that I have, which I think has maybe slightly less overall cooking space, the door seems two or three times as heavy. Maybe that's because this door isn't very tall. I'm not exactly sure. I like that there's a water pan included and a shelf to put it on. That seems nice. But overall, the big thing I notice is that this thing is built solidly. I mean, it weighs, I think, 600 pounds. And you can tell when you're moving it around, even though the casters are nice and they work well, but this thing is a chunk and it's made out of really thick metal, which I really like. And it comes with a Teltrue thermometer, which is more than I can say for most pits. And Teltrue, that's what I use on my 500. Um, I've just had the best luck with those. So the instructions say that you don't have to season this thing, but I think this rust tells me that I'll probably wash it, cover the whole thing in oil inside and out, and then re-season it. The outside is sticky, so it actually probably already does have quite a bit of oil on it. Or if you actually look at it, I'm gonna scrape some off here, it's a solid at room temperature. Now, I don't know of a vegetable oil that would be solid at room temperature, so I'm thinking this could perhaps be beef tallow, but who knows? Maybe I'll test the melting point and see if it's compatible with beef tallow. But this stuff is all over this thing, so it's kind of a messy process to put together, even though overall it's pretty easy. So to give you my final first impressions, I think this looks really, really promising. High quality, thick metal, tall stack, great thermometer. You know, it's built rock solid. So I'm really excited to get cooking on this thing, but before I can cook on it, I need to season it, and I'll show you that in a separate video. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel if you want to get updates on this smoker and other barbecue content. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time.